Hey! Wow, show energy. Hey, everybody. I'm excited. Or I'm on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you decide. Or let the coroner do it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, I like that kind of joke. It is episode what? Do you remember? Uh, 88. 87. 87. Very close. That's better. Yep. Yeah. It was 88. Cool. That was close. <laughs> 87 of Alex and Jim analyze mm. Billy Joel lyrics, colon, try to remember if they've talked about this song before. Yeah. Big colon. Yeah. That, that colon's getting bigger as we go. Oh, my God. And yeah. since I don't have a system other than, uh, let me look. Did we? <laughs> That's a, a, one uh, system bigger than my system, <laughs> which is, all right, let's see what Jim says. Yeah. So I was certain that we had talked about this before I picked it, except then I looked at all the episodes and we haven't. It hasn't been the star of an episode, but uh -huh. I realized why I think we've t we think we talked about it because it may not have been the star of an episode, but it's been a featured player a number of times in side <laughs> conversations. Oh, sure. And I think it was prominently when we were talking, or I brought it up, because if this topic gets brought up, guaranteed I brought it up, was we talked about the chipmunks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that feels like a you. Yeah. That, that was a gem. This is a song that the chipmunks covered. Great. On their punk rock album. And again, I, I mentioned this before, and I don't care how many times I say it because it's worth mentioning every time that the Chipmunks have an album called Chipmunk Punk. It's the best. It, it includes a Billy Joel cover. <laughs> many people would say that Billy Joel is not even rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Much less punk. And uh, did, now you said you had a theory before before we went on air. Alex said he had a theory about why we thought we talked about it. Was that your theory as well, or were you thinking of something else? I was thinking of something else, which is that you brought up, when we talked about doing this song, you brought up that it might have a sound effect. And does it? It doesn't. Because you and I both were thinking of You May Be Right. And so, which we have talked about. Yep. So that's what I thought the connection was. I bet that's true as well. Remembering talking about the sound effect song from Glass Houses. Yeah. Uh, which was not this song. <laughs> yeah. This is the funny voice. One of the funny voice songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a little care. I think this was a hit, right? I think it was a big hit. Yeah. Now, I watched a video. I got to say, there's actually a surprising number of people who do Billy Joel shows. And I don't know if they know more than we do, but quite a lot of them like him more than we do. And, and <laughs> we're just not nice all the time. Yeah. It's, oh, I, he wouldn't want that. No, there was, but this one guy wrote this thing about how much Billy Joel hated writing. He did a basically a video essay about how Billy Joel hated writing music or <laughs> felt to be, he in, in an interview just uh, compared it to getting your teeth drilled. Wow, okay. You know, which is a classic Billy Joel thing, which is to complain and use a well-worn cliche. <laughs> so, <laughs> fantastic. But he said, I he speculated that that's why you end up with something unique, which I had not thought about, which was if you got an album from any number of bands that you like, their hits you love, and there's a lot of effing filler on their album. Sure. If you go to a building and you go to their concert, you're waiting for them to play that song, the hit. Yes, absolutely. But Vienna, not a hit. Scenes from an Italian restaurant, not a hit. You can go a long list of songs 
that are great. Yeah. Not hits. Yeah. No, uh, you, no fillers really. Yeah. Maybe occasionally, but every song is trying. Yes. Every song is trying. And a lot of them could have been hits with, you know, if they'd been put out or if they had been in a different decade. Yep. Yeah. Some um, yeah. Dude was speculating that because he has this love hate relationship with the process, he went about it in a very disciplined way. Because yeah, he because he's also said he had to he would procrastinate, 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 and then it was just like, okay, let's get this done. Let's do some work. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed this guy's essay. Don't remember his name. Don't have a chance in hell of linking to it. So, oh, well, you go find it. Yeah. If you're a real fan, you'd find yeah. it. You know this guy. <laughs> this guy is video essayist. Yeah. This is the other thing that a lot of other Billy Joel shows do that we don't do. And I like that we don't do this. Uh, they talk about Billy Joel the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that seems crazy. <laughs> we, we don't do that. You're like that would get old pretty fast. Yeah, you, I think part of the magic of our show is is as a fan wondering, ooh, I wonder when they're going to bring up Billy Joel. Yeah, right. You don't want to. The dessert can't be all sugar. That's right. It's got to be some weird fruit in it. Yep. Rust. Oh my lord! So here's a question for you, a political question. So you saw the thing with Mitch McConnell. I Stop. did. Yeah, I don't buy the explanations. Yeah. I think he was lightheaded. It looked like he left. <laughs> he was yeah. gone from himself. Um, yeah, you know, I obviously I don't like the guy. But also, what, who's doing this to him? Yeah. Who, what is the point in having wielding power and being filthy rich? Yeah. Still having to work all the time and get yelled at all the time. Yeah. And he's not going to have a, a retirement. <laughs> so he's going to fucking kill. He is. So Podium. here's what I was thinking. Um, I'm blanking on her name. Who was the nice lady? Oh, no, was... it's happening to you too. Yeah, I know. Oh, God. It's happening to me for a while. <laughs> oh, it's probably Zoom. Oh no, it's Zoom. It's uh, who was the lady who advised that they could just have cake? Uh, Marie Antoinette was that her? Yes, Marie Antoinette. Yeah. So Marie Antoinette got her head cut off. Yep, and she was a victim of timing more than anything else. Because had she been that person, fifty years prior, said the exact same thing head stays on shoulder it was just that the poor and the downtrodden were like we've had enough right yeah that sure was... yeah i part. think that's accurate i mean she was probably part of the reason they'd had enough agreed um but she wasn't working alone yep so here's my point with mitch mcconnell I think within my lifetime, there would have come, been a time when he had that public problem that Democrats and Republicans alike would have all said, you know, whatever you think of him politically, I hope for the best. Yeah. And I hope he's okay. We'll wait and see. I don't know if he can continue in his capacity, but wait and see. No. None of that. All, no, I, all shot in Prada. All screwed. Yeah, guy. from the masses, yeah. From other yeah. politicians, I think they were, like Biden said nice things about him. Well, I was going to bring that up. Um, a little fun. I mean the masses, because the masses are the ones that eventually cut off the heads. <laughs> yeah. When you end I, up looking up from a basket, it's the masses that do it for the most part. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and and it seems to me that the mass is more and more, and not even just he can't even count from count on sympathy from the masses of Republicans. That's right in there. He's, the base hates him as well. 
yeah he how he's in office is a grand mystery at this point yeah i don't have the answer to that i think it's old institutionalism yeah and the fact that he's from fucking kentucky yeah and i saw so i saw what biden said and of course it was a nice thing that he said and it's what you would hope that your president would say yeah and you couldn't help but mostly think no <laughs> yeah. and it's funny uh, somebody commented somebody that uh, is a mutual is a follower on that i follow on twitter was like it's kissing his ass being saying we're friends and i'm like I didn't say this because it's pointless, but I'm like, well, they are friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're Biden, whatever you think of that, whether you think that's a good idea or not. Yeah, it is accurate. Biden has a philosophy, and it's a philosophy that gets infrastructure. Like, yeah, it, it does. You get infrastructure from being that kind of person, right? You don't get accolades from the more extreme members of any any party who want just to burn it all down but you know yeah if you do actually want to try to achieve things yeah it does seem to be the way yeah what, what fragments of bipartisanship there still are yeah but i really... wonder when when are the rich people going <clears throat> to realize oh no i think we might be near a very serious tipping point with tolerance um, I think it's uh, when the head is in the basket. <laughs> is when they're like, "Oh, they uh, they live in the most bubbly bubble of all of us." Yeah. Um, constantly surrounded by people telling them they're killing it. Yeah. Everybody loves them. They have to have some awareness of like rumbling in the distance. But my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are living in a very guillotiney. <laughs> times yeah um, yeah people are just I think realizing that every institution is corrupt at its core yeah every organization is wasting money and a failure and doesn't want to improve yeah and, and I think the big labor movements this summer are a huge indicator um, I, like Clarence Thomas was just on the news and like, okay, I disclosed some trips, but not all of them. And go fuck yourself. Yeah. I, you, your address is public. Yeah, I don't understand that thing. That I think we, for a long time, I guess we've all been working under the assumption that the Supreme Court can just be trusted to be honest, which of course makes no sense because they're still people. The thing, yes, of course. And they're rich people. <laughs> yeah. Who live in a bubble. Um they live in a bubble in, in a bubble because they there's oh, no, yeah. no regulating them. There's no Well, we all I think learned during the Trump years that so much of our government is based on like handshake agreements that we're all gonna behave pretty well. Yeah. And there's no guardrails, there's no <laughs> laws against a lot of things. Yeah. Like, well, what do you do if a Supreme Court justice is uh, horribly corrupt? Oh, well, he wouldn't do that. We don't need a we don't need a remedy. Yeah. They'll just all behave because we're all gentlemen here. Yep. I and hope there was a time like in early American history where you were like a rich prick, but there was a cutoff for all of those guys too. Yeah. Like, well, then certainly we can't do that to people. Yeah. That'd be upsetting for them. I hope Mitch McConnell is with it enough to at some point come to terms with the fact that he had a there was one moment when he could have cemented himself in history as a person people didn't like, but remember did the right thing. Yeah. Because he could have eliminated the Trump issue legally correctly, and it would have been the right thing to do. Yep. It would have been legal right correct yep it would have been what the system says you're supposed to do and he was never gonna do it no too cowardly to do something like that there's a lot of uh, people gambling on 
fascism, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Or like, fascism might win. And if it does, I don't want to be the guy who said, hey, no fascism. <laughs> that guy never does well in the history books. Yeah. He gets very killed. Yeah. Yeah. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Sorry, <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did we pick? Uh, still rock and roll to me. It's still rock and roll to me. And Which is funny. Yeah. As a title, as, uh, as of course, you know, his producers got a hold of him for this album. He was, he was having some hits for years and years. They were like, all right, we're, you've got to be a, more of a rock and roll guy. And then he went and wrote a song <laughs> called Still Rock and Roll to Me. Yes. That's very funny to me. It is very funny. And the thesis is in response to New Wave, right? Ish. I think he's basically saying, look, it's all rock and roll. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Stop telling me to be a rock and roll guy. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing that. So and you know what? To his great credit, the Beatles were, in many people's estimation, not really a rock and roll group, but come on. But come on. It's a big tent. Yeah. Rock and roll is, well, first of all, rock and roll is, rock and roll is the English language. It's a, it's a mishmash of so many styles or why it exists. Yeah. It includes the language of country music. It includes the language of blues and jazz. And it includes so much that makes it what it is. Yeah. I mean, you can sort of just look at the inductees every year for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. Every year. I'm like, what? Run DMC? <laughs> How yeah. does that work? Well, okay. But yeah, at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, there it all counts. Yep. Dolly Parton said, no, I don't deserve it, which is funny. Great. Because she's Dolly Parton and she's the greatest person. And you're like, no, you deserve all things, just so you know. Just so you know. You, but you don't have to take it either. <laughs> yeah. You should be president is what you should be, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, that. how great would it be just, you know, she gives a State of the Union address from Dollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Sign me up. All right. So it's still rock and roll to me. And still it rock and, roll to me. and me. Yeah. Uh, came out in 1980. So definitely a little bit of new wave going on right then. Yep. You can hear it in the song. Yep. So this um, is like stray cats are running around doing their thing. All that stuff. In the 80s? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that whole oh. swing, swinger thing happened. That's rock and that counts as rock and roll. Yeah, true, true. It uh, all counts. What a great album cover, by the way. Looking at it again. Very great. That house is somewhere near here, and we haven't gone to see it yet. Oh, Lord. I well, I think it's a Frank Lloyd Wright. It's some um, famous architect, maybe a different one. Yeah. Built this glass house and it's in upstate New York somewhere. Damn, that's cool. Well, listen, when I finally come to visit you, let's go. All right. Because I would like to see that. Yeah, it looks pretty fucking cool. You could take pictures of me throwing rocks at it. <laughs> and I'll take video of you being arrested and led away. Quickly. <laughs> Probably stopped before I managed to hurl even one. I'm sure. Uh, uh, do you want to go first or me? Uh, I'll go first this time. Do it. What's the matter with the clothes I'm wearing? Can't you tell that your tie's too wide? Uh, by the way, uh, lots of lines in quotation marks. Yeah. You see, he's asking and answering. I like that, by the way. Um, I feel like he's asking and like society's answering <laughs> or some version of that, like the the group. The group think is answering, yeah. What's the matter with the clothes I'm wearing? Can't you tell that your tie's too wide? 
I'm going to tell you all of this in the context of it being 1980. And if your tie is too wide in 1980. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should buy some old tab collars welcome back to the age of jive do you know what an old tab collar is i'm well i'm i can imagine it is it that one that kind of cuts up i have no idea let me look it up while you let me look that up what is a tab by the way, just to give you uh, an idea, yeah, it's yep. It it almost looks like a priest collar. Okay, yep. Where it has a button at the end of the. Yep. The most in. likely the sensible from the name a tab collar has a tab that runs across the collar, closure partway between the collar button and the points of the shirt, and then this person says it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It is a feature that is actually functional. Um. By the way, this will give you an idea of the kind of stuff I normally Google. I started to write, what is a tab collar? And it filled in, what is ricin and why is it so poisonous? Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Your laptop will be seized before long. Yeah. Also, uh, maybe I should buy some old tab collars is a weird thing for somebody to say in 1980. Yeah. And then they say, welcome back to the age of jive. When is the age of jive? And what is jive? <laughs> what is jive? What is the what age? Jive talking? Yeah, it feels like 70s then, right? Is jive a musical genre? Oh, um, it's like a linguistics thing. Jive dance is an upbeat, energetic dance style that originated in the early 1930s, so not that. Okay. A lively but, style of dance. Yeah, Cab Calloway. Jive was first demonstrated by Cab Calloway in 1934. Okay, so tab collars on cab. Tab on the cab. Tab on the cab, yep. That's what all the kids were saying. <laughs> uh, where have you been hiding out lately, honey? You can't dress trashy till you spend a lot of money. Fantastic. Nice. Great. Great observation. Still true. Yeah. I mean, you can dress trashy, but you can't dress super trashy <laughs> unless you have spent a lot of money. Yep. All those I remember. See, here's a vivid memory I have that will never leave my brain because I found it to be so stupid. There were there was some TV show, probably maybe MTV, interviewing all these girls talking about Madonna and how much they loved Madonna. And that alone is fine. You like your pop idols, you're entitled to your pop idols. And they were all dressed in giant earring lucky star era. Yeah. Okay. Great. So all that loose stuff and little naughty, whatever. And they're all literally they're all dressed like that. And uh, somebody, they asked the girls, why do you like to dress this way? What, what's it about Madonna? And one of the girls said, not as a joke, I love Madonna because she lets me express my individuality. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget that till I die. Pretty great. Yeah, we uh, are fucked up about what that means. Yeah. I'm sure like when you're leaving the house and your parents are mad at you, you're like, oh, I'm the individual in this house. Yeah. You know, you go to the club with all the other girls who did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, um, just did you... another click. That's all. And Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but and if you're like a true individual, then you're just weird yeah weirdo that's the word for that then you're that lady who figured out how to make cows comfortable before they get slaughtered i can't remember her name oh yeah temple grandin yeah then she's an individual she's an individual but she has autism yeah she's another click that's true <laughs> but there's nobody nobody there's not a big group of kids dressing like her <laughs> no how much no. would you love that, though, if that happened? 
We just love Temple Grandin. <laughs> it helps us express our individuality. Uh, yeah. uh, and then we yeah, get in this, in this, the Grandin machine, <laughs> and it calms us down. Oh, everybody! Let me finish this off. Everybody's talking about the new sound. Funny, but it's still rock and roll to, to me. So that's what makes me think it's particularly about new wave. I think. Yeah, I think if yeah, you know, the song comes out in 1980, then it's probably about that. But it's and, always true that there is a new sound that is still rock and roll. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, like, I think we were in college. Um, there was a lot of talk about alternative. Yeah, all these bands were alternative, and you would listen to them. And you're like, oh yeah, they're just rock and roll with not very good singers. Yeah. Or tiny guys um for like a weird instrument but it was, was like it's basically the it's same rock and roll. It's, it's rock and roll i mean rem was the most alternative band it was like top of the alternative charts every week was an rem song yeah it's just like on classic rock stations yep because rock grunge was rock it just happened to be very good rock and grunge is yeah. really Grunge is what the Beatles would have eventually done if people didn't age. <laughs> because it it grunge was just stripped down all the garbage. That's what John Lennon wanted. Right. That's not what Paul McCartney wanted, which is one of the reasons they but John Lennon at some point, I remember just him describing the Beatles this way. We were just this band because he was irritated with the yeah. Beatle mythos. Yeah. But just grunge something. is rock and roll. Yeah, you're right. It's just, I, I guess it's just that kids can't say that because they don't want to say, I also like the music my dad liked. Right. My dad likes rock and roll and so do I. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty great. All right. Let's, let me ask you a question. Uh-huh. What's the matter with the car I'm driving? Oh, wow. Can't you tell that it's out of style? Should I get a set of white wall tires? Are you going to cruise a miracle mile? Right. Yeah, I really like that too. Just teenager stuff that he remembers, which I don't know if people still did. But actually, I think people still do this nonsense. I still Absolutely. see kids piling into a dumb car and driving nowhere. <laughs> um, David Wilcox, the musician, has a great line in a song about that and the line is six lights down and six lights back facing <laughs> like a woman in a cage that's pretty great really great that is pretty great i want to write this down by the way i want to later on mention a miley cyrus lyric but it's uh, it's i just don't want to forget clearly i'm obsessed with her um what do you think is the miracle mile so there is one in Chicago. There's a street that's just called the Miracle Mile. Yeah. It sounds like it's he's talking about like the street where the hookers are or something. That's what I think too. But also it could be a small town thing because in Tucson there was Miracle Mile. Right. right? And it was where idiot kids, <laughs> myself included would just go yep and there were things to do like there were places to get a hoagie places to play a video game if you were that kind of kid places to get served alcohol when you were underage yeah places to cause trouble or just drive real fast because you're young and you'll never die yep and I think every uh, little town has uh, a street, and I do think a lot of times they happen to be called Miracle Mile. Yeah, every town certainly has a, a strip. Yeah. Um, I remember in Tucson, the, there was a lot of, it was Speedway. Mm -hmm. and there were a lot of those places, and people would just park their cars at like Sonic or wherever and sit on the hood. And just sit on the hood of their cars with their friends. And just let people see them and be like, this is the car that I own and here is me. Yeah. 
just for your information. I mean, isn't that kind of lovely? Yeah, it's kind of great. It really is. I liked that. One time in high school, we were playing video games, and there was this guy who was the father of a girlfriend Paul was dating who did not like Paul. What? Yeah. And he was, and we were just out being idiots. Sure. Um, and he saw that that guy, the dad, was still in his office. His office happened to be near where we were. Oh, and no. he didn't know me. And so Paul goes, hey, I want you to yell at him. Yell Hamish at him. Yell Hamish. Just get his attention. So yell Hamish. And I misunderstood. And I went, Mish. Hey, Mish. Great. And Paul panicked as if we'd done something wrong by <laughs> just saying his name wrong. And we left. Great. And that's the Friday night. Yep. Yep. And that's all you need. Somehow I thought his name was Mish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it made as much sense as Hamish. Yep. The time. Oh my good. Are you gonna cruise the miracle mile? Nowadays you can't be too sentimental. This line I've never understood. Maybe you do. Your bet, <laughs> your best bet, a true baby blue continental. What what is sentimental? Is it that you painted the car? I don't get it. What are you doing <laughs> that's not sentimental? Yeah. I think it just rhymes okay that, well, that's he about had it. he had your best bets a true baby blue continental and i was like oh fuck what rhymes with continental yeah or it's two separate thoughts i okay i guess two separate thoughts but then that's weird because then it doesn't mean anything right because the whole <laughs> verse is about cars yeah and then all of a sudden <laughs> you can't be too sentimental can't be too, too sentimental and because I was like, is there a proper color for a continental? And no, we want a baby blue continental. Yeah. And if you're getting a car that's true and it's your best bet, then that is sentimental. Yeah. You can't be too experimental. Yeah. Hot funk, cool punk, even if it's old junk. I like all of that. It's that's just silly, but it's good. As <laughs> yeah. in a rock and roll song, that's a perfect lyric. Hot funk, Absolutely. cool punk, even if it's old junk. Oh, it's funny to reference funk. Yeah. Although funk, it counts. It does. Because funk, as far as all the movements, to me was the closest to not rock and roll anymore because it was different enough. Because of what yeah. the artists within funk would do. But even right. so, you're right. It's still just rock and roll. It's still part of that umbrella. Yeah, the ethos, too, of yeah. experimentation and pushing everything forward. Yeah. You know, George Clinton is as much a rock star as a funk star. True. And, you know, this goes to what you had to say, which is it, it's more, not just new wave. You're right. It's absolutely just... Whatever it is, it's still rock and roll to me. That's what it sounds like to me is rock and roll. Yeah. By the way, isn't this a musician's point of view? Because it's always the non-musicians who draw the lines. Right. But the it's actual probably. musicians are like, it's music. Yeah. And a lot of them will say, like, I'll work with anybody. Yep. I'm interested in all kinds of stuff. Yeah. 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 It's the... Uh, music journalists uh, more than anything who have to draw lines yeah. and make arguments and cases for things yeah and these guys are like i just like that's the, i, I want to put a banjo in my album <laughs> yep no no yeah absolutely and then when they do and if you're a rock fan it ends up being one of your favorite songs because you go oh it's crazy there's a banjo in it and you're happy to hear it yeah yeah you don't want to have the same shit. Yeah, it's just something different. And then uh there then there's a bridge, you get the bridge. 
I get the bridge. Oh, this is just what we were just talking about. It doesn't matter what they say in the papers, because it's always been the same old scene. There's a new band in town, but you can't get the sound from a story in a magazine aimed at your average teen. Yeah. Now, yeah. can I just say, I love, have always loved the way he sings aimed at your average teen. I love that. That's right. It gets, it's quiet, but it's not quiet. It's just kind of, it does something really neat. It's actually properly rock and roll is what that is. It's pretty great. Probably. Yeah, quite proper. <laughs> <laughs> I like that it. it's also this serves as like a thesis for the whole thing. Yeah. Look, it doesn't matter what you say the categories are. Writing about it isn't the same as listening to it. Yeah. So fuck off. Yeah. And that's the thesis of his whole career. It doesn't matter what you say. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's what you should do. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is. The one song where he's he's given advice. This time it's about what you may or may not wear. <laughs> That's, <funny. laughs> That's great. Um, and it's set up so that someone's giving him advice. Yeah. Uh, so still him. The bridge is so short. Why don't you read the next part and then I'll finish us out. All right. How about a pair of pink sidewinders and a bright orange pair of pants? Oof. Don't know what sidewinders are. I know. I think that's my job now, so I'll find out for us while you're... Yeah, I like that. How about a pair of pink sidewinders and a bright orange pair of pants? Terrible. Someone says sarcastically to him, you could really be a Bo Brummel, baby, if you just give it half a chance. Now, Bo Brummel... I'm gonna... I'll look that one up. Yeah. I think he was a famous clothes horse. Okay, sidewinders are pants are pull on with minimal back gather and easily constructed without buttons, zips, or fastenings. The lightly tapered leg, these pants are designed to be worn just above the ankle with either a standard fold up or deep gathered hem. <laughs> And everybody says stuff like this. The sidewinder looks just as flattering in the full length trouser option. Why does why? Uh, I guess there's someone who wants that information. Um, this is my favorite. Oh, they're also a style of slip on shoe, so he might mean the shoe. Oh, uh, probably the shoe. Okay. Bo Brummel, um, who died in 1840, Whoa. was an important figure in Regency England. Many years, the arbiter of British men's fashion. Mm. Um, he <laughs> got into a fight with a friend of the king, exiled to France. Eventually, it says, eventually he died shabby and insane. Wow. <laughs> oh, Brummel. Wow. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have the remnants of some weird malady. Wow. Um, don't waste your money on a new set of speakers. You get more mileage from a cheap pair of sneakers. That's nice and sarcastic, right? I think. I can't tell. That's in the quotes. So that's someone saying that. Yeah, that's somebody giving him the dumb advice. Like, don't worry about music. Yeah. Some sneakers. Next phase, new wave, dance craze. Anyways... Still rock and roll to me. I do like anyways. Anyways. Anyways, it's very dismissive. In that great way of his. That's great. That's, That's great. really great. So it's I, nice too. It's it's repetitive in a particular way. He's just going through, here's the other dumb thing you could wear. But it doesn't feel repetitive in the sense of you're doing this because you couldn't think of anything else. It all fits and it all feels good. Yep. It's him. It's it's very sassy. Yeah, and not it's not that usual like a little bit of a drag kind of curmudgeon. Yep, zestier, isn't it? After this, that he shouts out, "Rico!" <laughs> All right, Rico. I right? think so. 
Yeah, for the big uh, saxophone solo. Yeah. Very rock and roll. That's great. Uh, Rico is uh, Richie Canada, right? His yep. sax player. God bless. In indeed. What's the matter with the crowd I'm seeing? Don't you know that they're out of touch? Well, that's the thing that everybody tells you when you're in a dumb clique. Don't hang out with that dude. Yep. Should I try to be a straight A student? If you are, then you think too much. I like that line a lot. It's great. It's very him. It's very Long Island. Yeah. And I like the way he sings straight A student. Yeah. You, yeah, me too. His little Long Island voice. Yep. Hmm. Don't you know about the new fashion, honey? All you need are looks and a whole lot of money. Man, right. that's fantastic. Fantastic. It is... So you can, in the lyrics and in the way he sings it, you can hear his irritation <laughs> with the Jags he's competing against. Yes. Because you know what? I am sure the Thompson Twins, and I bring them up more than once, but I am sure the Thompson Twins probably at this point were doing better on the charts. But you yeah. don't remember the Thompson Twins. <laughs> They were garbage. There was some good stuff back then, but a lot of like the stuff that he's flock of seagulls. A lot of stuff. There was a lot of flotsam on the British wave. Oh my god! Yeah, a lot of a lot of bands snuck in. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's so great. Oh, um, don't you know about the new fashion, honey? All you need are looks and a whole lot of money. Great. It's the next right. phase, new wave dance craze. Anyways, it's still rock and roll to me. Oh, and this beautiful song has a proper ending. Yes. And I it's like terrific. it. Everybody's talking about the new sound funny, but it's still rock and roll to me. Ooh. <laughs> Not an over-the-top woo, by the way. No, no, it's very, like considered woo yep <laughs> i love uh that he just is like here's once again my thesis and now woo and goodbye yeah that's fantastic. a lot of great lyrics and a lot of like great rhyming and great meter i think i think your best bet's a true baby blue continental might be his best line ever. It's really nice, yeah. The poetry and the rhyming and the alliteration, <laughs> like it's got it all. And this is probably one of the better, really perfect use of his snark. Yes. His sarcasm, his fed upness, distilled in a way that's so enjoyable and pal palatable. It's why you'd like him as a guy, because if this were a conversation at a diner, he'd be going off and you'd be laughing, enjoying your sandwich while he just went off uh, the way we always like, you know, when you were hanging out with your comic friends at a diner and one of them lost their mind for a minute and monologued and you were just having a great time. Yeah, the best. That's and why I didn't see it ahead of time, but I'm glad I didn't. A proper ending. Give it up for a proper ending. <laughs> Give it up. Uh, no fat it, in this. There's no fat in this song. This no great. fat in this. It feels like he's being, it's a good kind of snark because he's talking about something he really knows well. Yep. Very confident that he knows well. I think a lot of times when he's uh, whiny or pushy or we don't like him, he's singing about love and how to do love, which he clearly doesn't know. <laughs> Yeah, he kind of doesn't, does he? Very defensive about his attitude. Yeah. Of songs. But here he's like, okay. Thanks for your, it's rock and roll to me. Yeah. You may go now. Yeah, you're right. And because he knows what he's talking about, he's not even overly upset, which makes it real charming. Yeah. yeah fine. I don't have to prove I'm right. I just know I'm right. Yeah. Ah, that's, yeah. 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 Great position to come from. What a good little tune. What a good... Side of his powers. Yep. 
And by the way, this one comes up on a playlist. I never skip this one. No. This one I'll listen to every time. And it's early 80s, right? It's a lot of people say this is his best as far as if you ask people. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is in the in the list of albums. But I've come to realize that I don't really think that about any of his albums. I just kind of like him. So. <laughs> right. But it's definitely got a lot of songs on it that I'll listen to more than a lot of other songs. Yes, I agree. It's yeah. one you can I can sing the whole album <laughs> with no problems. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really was like 52nd Street and this were kind of dense with good shit. Yeah. Um, just no misses yeah this is where he makes his legacy and then the other albums are the albums that as long as they're good enough get him to the stature he's at which is national treasure do what you want to do old man doesn't matter <laughs> yep. and, and we'll take a hit here and there yep and you don't yeah. want to do it anymore great play the old ones yeah now i'll tell you something about this uh -huh. I, I was looking at art independent of our show and i went oh this would be a good clue which has never happened before this nice. was not picked out for that purpose i was just looking at things or very cool piece of art yeah yep yep well we all have a face that we hide away forever yeah some are satin some are steel that looks like it might be steel that's steel. Nice. Steel face. Done. Dave will be happy. We got it. In and out on that. Got you, Dave. <laughs> this time I got you. Most times I don't got you, Dave. Oh, there was one little topic I want to bring up. Do Real it. Quick. I'll do it quick while you get your trivia ready. Um, for some reason, our uh, viewership seems to be going up. Oh, good. And I don't understand it. That's fine. I'm glad that they are. But I'm delighted. So I'm asking if you've gotten to this point. I don't know if people watch a whole episode or if they like to watch pieces. But if you are one of the many people who are now watching, could you leave a tiny comment on this video? I'd like to hear what you think, even if it's something mean. Yeah. Um, a few people have commented. Time. Yeah. Mean about the show is fine. Yeah. Mean about me is fine too. I um, don't want any mean comments. Yeah, no mean comments about Alex. But can't take it. yeah, since many of you are are actually watching, I would I would enjoy uh, you making comment. And then if you don't want to, that's fine. But I would like it. So if you would take the time to make a comment, I would appreciate it. That's it. Yeah, consider how much time you've already wasted, <laughs> and just add a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, consider how much time you've wasted and then leave a comment that's just i'm sad now sad that i've wasted this time ah uh, my baby needs food okay what's your trivia is um all right buddy billy joel was the musical guest on snl four times wow four times the first time who was the host or, for that matter, who hosted any of the times that he was the musical guest? All right. So I'm going to take a good swing, and I'm going to say Tom Hanks. <laughs> That's a smart swing. Yeah. Uh, not not the case. I hope it was Robert Blake. <laughs> no, sadly, no. None Robert, of them are like funny that way. Yeah, Robert Blake is my favorite of all of the... Oh, really? He hosted? He's my favorite. That's pretty great. Um, uh, then I'll uh, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> no. Steve Martin. No. Oh God, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. That's yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-one. Eighty-one. Nice. So you might have played stuff from Glass Houses. No, I might be lying. I think it might be seventy-eight. Oh wow! So not Glass Houses. Because it was like right after Chevy Chase left, he came back and hosted. Yeah. Um, no, it was 52nd Street stuff. Rad, okay. 
Sorry, the stranger? Stranger. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a quick, easy trivia question. When Letterman moved over to CBS, who was his first musical guest? Uh, was it Billy Joel? It sure was. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. It was Billy Joel, and he sang a song off of uh, River of Dreams, and it wasn't River of Dreams. Oh, great. Well, then I'm happy. Yeah, and of course, you know who the other first guest was, all, was Bill Murray. Oh, great. Because Bill Murray was the first guest on the old show. Fantastic. Yep. All right, now we got to wrap it up because you guys got to get dinner. So what are we doing next week? Let's do, if we haven't already, famous last words. Famous last words. And I don't know. So if we have, I'll let you know. But I think we're probably pretty safe. I don't think we have. I looked at the lyrics. They're not familiar. They're sort of about the end of summer. Yeah. Some degree. And uh, there's a bar across the street from our apartment building called Famous Last Words. I like bars. It's just trivia about me. Doesn't do you <laughs> any. All right. Perfect.